Okay. <laughs> Wife and I are down here at the uh, dock. <laughs> We're gonna do the Spray Falls cruise. It's the big granddaddy of them all. And the people there are going out at four o'clock waving. They look scared. This young man's got a life jacket on. My wife and I are kind of wondering why. And he can't get the ship untied. So this is so far a pretty good deal. Mm -hmm. So we're here an hour early because they told us to get here an hour early because people line up. Well, I don't see anybody lined up. No, oh, they're all waving. I want to film this thing taking off. This is the second adventure of the day. Mm -hmm. Some of my followers probably know that we were at how do you say it? Kitchitakippi. Kitchitakippi Big Spring this morning. That was quite interesting. Okay, there they go. Good sized boat, I guess. Yesterday there was seven to nine foot waves, so we couldn't do it. We couldn't go kayaking. So I don't know that kayaking is going to be in our future because we're going to do this and we're not going to have time because we're heading to Whitefish Point. Uh, that thing's like a catamaran. Maybe I can get this lady to come and talk to us. So here comes one coming in and the other one's going out. I'm not sure how many boats how many boats they have. I, I don't know. But we're going on one of them. It's the classic. I picked up a new sponsor today. Uh, Becky Smith, Becky Skeens. Becky Smith. Becky Smith. I'd like to thank her for being a sponsor, <laughs> along with Tony Hyman and, uh, of course, Doug Light. Subscriber. <laughs> no, sponsors. They, sponsor. give, they give me money. <laughs> oh. They're not subscribers. <laughs> so, if y'all want to get on, you know, get on YouTube and uh, subscribe and become a sponsor. Better yet. Sponsor. <laughs> Apple Rock. We were there yesterday on our hike. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't look like anybody's. Everybody looks pretty. Yeah, pretty calm. calm. Nobody's puking. So here comes people <clears throat> from the town. The two are coming back. Not bad. I saw it. How was it? Good. Nice. Uh, yeah. Nice. nice. Well, we've never seen it. Nice. Yeah. We hiked it yesterday, so we want to see it from the lake or the lake side. Yeah. Cool. Well, I didn't sound real excited about it. Uh, Sounds like they've been on it a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> they brought their friends. National Lakeshore. Your crew is out of the pictured rocks. Today we'll cover a distance of right around 34 miles round trip. Should take about one hour and 50 minutes to complete. Along their trip, we'll be seeing 13 miles of sandstone cliffs that drop off into the water. Some places those cliffs reach as high as 200 feet. While that sandstone is a relatively soft rock, it gets carved out by the wind, rain, and waves which creates archways, formations, and caves. There's also mineral spring water that seeps through the layers of rock and run down the face, 
Almost looks like somebody painted the face of the cliff. On our trip out, we'll be seeing three sandy beaches, a couple small waterfalls, and on a return trip, we'll take a close pass by an old lighthouse that's been refurbished. Well, the name of the boat you're riding on today is called the <laughs> Chapel Rock. The Chapel Rock was built in Wetumpka, Alabama back in 2019. She is 65 feet long, can carry 150 passengers, and is powered by two Caterpillar diesel engines. There are C18s and 800 horsepower piece. Once we're at our cruising speed, they'll be pushing us along at right around 26 miles per hour. Hold on tight. Another. While this brown vertical stain is what's left of Bridal Veil Falls. Bridal Veil Falls only runs in the springtime after the snow melts or after a heavy rain. The reason for that is some beavers build dams on top of the creek to feed the falls. Now it pretty much dries up in the summertime. And these next three large coves are called the Painted Coves. Try to remember your colors. Reds, browns, and oranges are from iron. The blues and greens are from copper. The white is from calcium, and the black is from manganese. You can see how this first cove is mostly made of iron. Well, now is also a good time to mention we do have a small concession stand on board, located just inside the main cabin. We've got a cooler full of refreshments including Coke, Diet Coke, Sprite, a zero sugar lemonade, and bottled water. All for just one dollar a piece. All that we ask is if you do purchase a canned beverage, is if you could bring it back to the concession stand when you're done with it, so we can put it into a bin for recycling. down as we were yesterday we, no. we, we will be there and we walked on top of that just keep that in mind it's crazy cool wave at the other people yeah the cliff what looks to be bushes well those are actually old stunted trees what happens in the winter large waves will crash into here and get on top and by midwinter there'll be three to four feet of ice up there pretty much stunts their growth And if you look down the shoreline, you will see that archway. Well, that's Lover's Leap. I do not recommend jumping off Lover's Leap though. I don't care how much you think you're in love. The water beneath the arch is only three feet deep. <laughs> sticking out into the lake is called Indian Head Rock and you yes, might notice we why some of we the local here. Native yep. Americans that once canoed through here were quite yep. frightened yep. of his presence. We were on the top of that. Itchy Manitou they call them. The Great Spirit. Well the way I see Indian Head his chin is at water level. Large rock outcropping halfway up that's his nose. An oval shape for a left eye and the trees are his headdress. Kind of looks three-dimensional, see a jawline, 
cheekbone, even an ear. Rock. Yeah, I see it. Well, Indian Head Rock is 180 feet high. Jeez. Oh I told everybody we were 100 <laughs> feet above the water. I'm at 180. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> well, you did it first, though. It's better to do that, right? That's what I told him. I'm like, I'm not even going to be able to believe I did that. Literally. After 100 feet, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't. The impact's going to be about the same. Right. Yeah. What is it, terminal velocity? Terminal velocity. Yeah. Yeah. Every time I come out, I'm like, okay, if I live <laughs> when I fall in, where can I go? <laughs> to swim. It's good to have that plan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of our sandy beaches it's called chapel beach and when hikers get this far out they think that they're millions of miles away from everyone and on those hot sticky summer days they'll take off all of their clothes and run up and down this beach naked that's disgusting isn't it about that time we'll come around the corner with a boat full of people and surprise everyone well, you passengers don't seem to mind too much, though. I actually had one gentleman come and tell me that was the only wildlife he saw his entire vacation. <laughs> At the end of the beach is the Lower Chapel Falls. It's the mouth of the Chapel River. of the cruise. It's called Chapel Rock. Notice that lone white pine tree on top of Chapel Rock. Well, the only way it gets its water and nutrients is from its roots that hang over to the mainland. Wow. You can see those roots quite easily dangling off the left-hand side. Yeah, we well, there used to be a stone archway supporting those roots. But that came crashing down over 60 here. years ago. <laughs> Yet, the tree lives on. That's what we need to do. We've reached our last point of interest called Spray Falls. 
Spray Falls is one of the only waterfalls that runs year-round along the pictured rocks. And what happens in the winter, an ice calm will form around the outside and the water will flow through the center. But despite its beauty, Spray Falls is also the site of one of the earliest and worst maritime disasters on the Great Lakes. Back in 1856, this side wheel passenger vessel, the Superior, lost its rudder and capabilities to maneuver in an October snowstorm. Crashed up against the cliff and broke into pieces. All 32 crew and passengers lost their lives. <coughs> While the rocks do continue for about one more mile, then it tapers off to a sand beach for 12 miles, goes to the farthest point you can see in the distance, called Osawa Point. Around Osawa Point is that small village of Grand Marais. If you ever make it to Grand Marais, you shouldn't miss the sand dunes. They extend some 300 feet above the lake. On a return trip, we'll be cruising down that same shoreline. In some places, I'll try to get you just a little bit closer. But other than that, just sit back, relax, and, and enjoy, enjoy the ride. Okay, that's that's not me narrating this trip. I know you think I'm that knowledgeable, but I'm not. <laughs> Getting up close and personal now. Anything like this before? Well, guess what? Neither have we. <laughs> well, right now, in about 15 feet of water, this boat drafts four and a half. I will. I'll look it up. Cool. So yeah, he's getting uh, a lot closer to the called warships. So it looks like ships, battleships. It looks like the ships are coming out. They're coming the other way. It really does. But yeah, he's really getting his clothes.
is a good time to get your camera ready. It's going to be on the right side of the boat. We're just going to stop in front so you can get some pictures and I'll tell you about its history. still standing on Lake Superior. It was built back in 1867. The last man to run the old lighthouse was a man named George Pryor. He lived out here in considerable isolation with his small family. And when I mean small family, it was just him, his wife, and their 12 children. Well, George Pryor last turned out the kerosene lamp back in 1907. That's when this was replaced by the range lights in Munising. Well, the people that own the summer homes off to the left also own a part of the lighthouse. They're in charge of the upkeep and maintenance. Can kind of see what they've done. Built that brake wall in front to protect it from erosion. Put new wood siding on. Even put a new copper roof on the lantern room. Okay, that's it. The pictured rock tour it's amazing. is over. Beautiful. We're back. It's another one in the books. Informative. So, until tomorrow on our next adventure, our new friends. <laughs> Say goodbye, wife. Goodbye, wife. Will, will we be on your YouTube? Yep.